I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, but I'm not talking about snow. Billy White Shoes Johnson inducted into the Ring of Honor is all I want for Christmas, plus a Christmas Eve showdown with Seattle. Our Santa Claus, Dave McGinnis, has checked his list twice and determined that Bobby Wagner is not nice. He'll tell us why when we go beneath the surface. It's a ho-ho-ho holiday edition of Titans All Access that starts right now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? What a catch! Will Levis! What a big time throw! Big Jeff! Fires up another second. Amani Hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for another edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. Safety Imani Hooker has been a bright spot on the Titans defense this year. 85 tackles, 69 of them solo. He's forced and recovered a fumble. He has an interception, seven passes defensed, and two run stuffs. No matter the circumstances in any given game, Imani's always working hard. See and hear for yourself in this week's Listen Up with Duncan. Yeah, yeah, it's Ski. Hey, hot mic, coach, hot mic, hot mic. Right here, right here. Ah, ah, ah. There you go, let's go. Yeah, 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 sir, give me. Let's eat, dog. Let's eat. Let's eat, Harold. Let's go, dog. Let's go. Ready? Something's gonna happen. Hey. I'm gonna look at you like this. You already know. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! What you talking about? Yes, sir. Let's go! Hey, go ahead. I love you, mama. Yes, sir. I love you, mama, too. I ain't forget. Ayazo! It's game time. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Nico, dog. Come on, Nico. No, boy. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, good luck, brother. Good luck, brother. Stay happy, fool. Still to come on this edition of Titans All Access, Dave McGinnis joins me to break down one of Seattle's biggest weapons on defense, the great Bobby Wagner. But right now, I have to make a wardrobe change. I need some Oilers gear and some white shoes because Billy White Shoes Johnson is joining me in the Bet MGM studio for this week's Nissan Insider. I'm gone, and we're back. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio, and as promised, I got my Oilers gear on, I've put on my white shoes, and I'm ready for this very special Nissan Insider with the newest member of the Oilers Titans Ring of Honor Billy White Shoes Johnson, it is an honor and a pleasure, sir. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. It's good to be here and good to be seen these days. All right, so I have to ask this question. Do you ever wear anything other than white shoes? No, I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Early on, I might have, but after that second or third year, I don't think I have. So how did you become White Shoes Johnson? I was the president of the Pat Boone Club. We wear white uh, bucks, 
I'm lying. Don't I believe. was going to say, you got to be kidding me. I know about the white bucks with Pat Booth, Bally. No. No, that's good. No. <laughs> very, very well done. I started uh, just to be different in uh, high school because that, at that time, everybody was wearing black shoes. And it was kind of redundant to me. And I just wanted to do a little flash. So we were sitting on our front porch, I guess, one day, and a good friend of ours came up to me while I was out there. I'm young and impressionable. He asked me, if you think you're so good, why don't you wear uh, uh, white shoes like Joe Willie Namath? Well, because he was the guy. He was the guy who started. He wore those white spot belts. Exactly. That were so sweet. Yeah, they were nice. And see, what I did, when I got my shoes, finally, we went to a game and we played the best defense in our county. And I had a good game and uh, it was a homecoming game. So they says, Blazing Billy white shoes. And ever since then, and ever since that game that I had that good game in, uh, they've been calling me white shoes. Now my coach didn't, didn't, didn't care too much for it at first. But when I went to training camp and I wore them one day and he came after a, uh, a second, a third or fourth day, uh, two of days and we were gonna have a scrimmage. He said, uh, what's up with the shoes? And for no better reason, I said, they make, they make me run faster. <laughs> and he didn't say a word, he just said, oh, okay, he nodded his head. So we had a scrimmage, and I had a good game. He never said another word about the shoes. Where did the dance come from, and when did it first oh, happen? Oh, I know, I know yeah. the dance itself was the funky chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where did it come from in your mind to do that, and where did you first do it? I first did it, I was, you know, at that time <clears throat> in college, we were playing a rival team of ours, and they were a little hokey. They got a little above themselves, you know. And me being always in the entertainment field at that time, I would be hosting nightclub acts and stuff like that. So I had really, a, yeah, I had a chance to host a Rufus Thomas, who made the funky funky you know, chicken famous. Yeah, yeah. Who made the hey, do the funky chicken? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you another lie. So <laughs> oh, you <did>. see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't do that. I promise no more. No more storytelling. But I did know Rufus Thomas. Yeah, you know was, that. So I didn't know that you, was true. You know and that, that was could true. have happened. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. It, yeah, that's what happened in the court of law. You could have told it, it me could have that, happened, and I yeah. would have never doubted you. No, you're right, because it's almost like the truth, uh -huh. you know. But no, but what happened? We were, this is true. We were playing a rival ball club of ours, and I said, I tell you what, if I were to score, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dance, and then I did something. And he said, man, you ain't gonna do it. I said, man, I am, I really So uh, I, I scored a couple of times, I danced a couple of times, and I kept my end of the bargain. Did you know you were gonna do that when you got in the end zone when you were with the Oilers, or did it just happen? It just ha I promise you, it just happened. We had beat the Steelers, I had scored on the end around, and I went in there, and I automatically did it. And then a couple other times I said, I'm not gonna dance again, and it just happened. Then later on they said, man, we like that dance. We want to see you do it more. But you think about the, the fabric of the NFL and everybody knows who you are because of your nickname. They can't tell the story of this league without you. I mean, you've had a remarkable career in and outside of football, but I mean, this has got to be, for a guy who played at Widener and it, it's got to be a little mind numbing, right? It is overwhelming to a point uh, when Amy, uh, they gave me the news that they were going to put me into the ring of honor. Boy, I mean, I was speechless and overwhelmed because that takes a lot for a team to sit down there and decide of who would go into the ring of honor. And I'm looking at the guys that I'm following, Earl Campbell, Robert Brazil, uh, Alvin Bethay, Frank Wycheck, and all these guys. It's, it, that's talk, you know, you're, you're in big company, big time company. Uh, and. You know, I just feel blessed and fortunate that I came along when I came along and played for the right people. Um, and I just have been so fortunate. It's been a great walk for me, a great run. And I have no regrets. I do it again. This moment of being inducted into the Ring of Honor is, is something I never thought about. I never found it in any way. Billy White Shoes Johnson, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. You can hear my entire conversation with the Oilers legend on the official Titans podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts, including TennesseeTitans.com slash podcasts. That's the OTP. 
Stick around for more Titans All Access and a heartwarming story next. This is Stadium in 60, a quick update on the Titans' new stadium presented by Nissan. Fan experience is a term that you will hear a lot when we talk about the new Titan Stadium. That begins with connectivity. Kellen DeCourcy is the Titans' new stadium project executive. Well, from a high-tech perspective for our stadium, I think we're really focused and intentional on the fan experience and making sure that nowadays everyone's using their phone. The, the technology's got to work. You've got to be connected at every point of the stadium where you're at. So we've worked with a master technology integrator to make sure that uh, we're going to have that level of wireless connectivity and cellular providers. So we are um, you know, paying close attention to that in the design. We'll call it the plumbing of the building is going to be there and that the flow is always on. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. Will Lavis from the Tennessee Titans is here to shop with you today. What up, guys? Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I'm so excited to spend some time shopping with you guys. Will has gift cards for everybody. Oh, oh my God! God. Let's go find some gifts. All her moments fell out with Legos. Yeah, I was the same way. I was the same way. That was something my sister had growing up. I wanted to make something happen during the holiday season, and we were able to make the connection with the Boys and Girls Club, and you know it was able to work out. I'm so glad that we were able to put this together in the last couple of weeks. Seeing their faces all light up when I came in here is really cool, and um, I'm just starting to get out here and connect more with the community as my time here in Tennessee goes along. Ron Slay is one of the greatest schoolboy basketball players to ever come out of Nashville. He won SEC Player of the Year honors at the University of Tennessee, had a great career overseas, and is now a budding star in broadcasting. With his basketball background, Ron Slay surprises some with his incredible passion for the Tennessee Titans. But as Ron explains, his love for the Titans is personal, very personal. I tell you what, man, I, I remember when they arrived to Nashville. The year before they got here, I was a freshman in high school. Our house caught on fire in North Nashville. We didn't have the means to move from that house, so we had to go stay in that house. We stayed there for about six, seven months. The Titans moved here. And going into my sophomore year, we're getting ready to go into Christmas. And like me and my brothers and sisters, the oldest of six, we ain't telling my mom, man, we gotta get gifts, this, that, and the other. But I remember Christmas morning, we woke up. There wasn't no toys or anything under the tree, but we ain't tripped. We just went in there, ate breakfast. All of a sudden, there was a knock on the door. My mom go answer the door, and it's the Tennessee Titans coming over there with gifts. I remember Marcus Robinson. I remember D, a D-line coach. I can't remember their name, but automatically right then, they became my favorite team. Forget the player. Like, that did it for me. <laughs> that, that was like they made something happen as a sophomore with all my brothers and sisters that we had no earthly idea what we were going to celebrate. So they automatically put life back in us knowing that like the Music City Miracle, miracles can't happen. I carried that forever. Third down and 10 now. Three receivers to the right. They're in a bunch tight. Keenum takes the snap. Swings it out. Intercepted tight. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. End zone. Elijah Bolden. Touchdown. Tight. That'll work. That'll work. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. Here's my Titans Radio broadcast partner, Dave McGinnis, who knows Pete Carroll very well. You have gone against him many times. Yes, I have. While he was coach of these Seattle Seahawks. What's a Pete Carroll team like? Well, first of all, it's going to be very fundamentally sound on, on defense. You know that. And then offensively, he really plays good complimentary football. He always has. He did it at USC, did the same thing when he came to Seattle. He plays complimentary football with his offense, but he builds everything around his defense. He, br he brought that, that three-match defense to the National Football League and played it exclusively for a lot of years. 
When I was with the Rams, we played them every year. We built that Rams team when we went in there early on to beat Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks because they were the top of the NFC West at the time. So you always knew that you were going to have a very fundamentally sound team. And what we used to try to get over on him on were special teams. We did it a couple of times with the Mountaineer, with, but it, it takes a lot of work to get something over on him. The most fundamentally sound player on his team is 12th year linebacker Bobby Wagner, who appears headed for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And as well he should be. I remember we, we vetted Bobby, brought him in for a visit at the Rams, wanted him very badly. He was a second round pick out of Utah State. And you just knew, watching him play at Utah State, this was a guy that made plays everywhere in every way. And he was the perfect behind the ball linebacker that you were looking for, especially if you could build a defensive front in front of him that could eat up some, some gaps. I mean, he made plays inside, he made plays outside. He is going to be a Hall of Fame football player, and, and he's produced really, really well. We're going to go beneath the surface with Coach Mack, powered by Microsoft, to show us why Bobby Wagner is the special player that he is. Well, first of all, the reason that this play is, is, is brought up, every, you can see this is a, this is a short yardage, and, and basically you're getting ready to get the tush push here. And so you think, well, this is not a very you know exciting play to watch this shows Bobby Wagner first of all his instincts second of all he's not only a, a guy that has played for 12 years in the league but he understands the game he understands what he has to do watch how he plays this version of the tush push by the Giants stop it Mike this works this play works because Bobby Wagner Bobby Wagner was able to come up he, he was able to come up here and He's the one that makes the play. He's the one that comes up and makes the play because the tush push is, 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 is made to wedge out everybody up the inside. Bobby Wagner didn't just jump into air over nothing. He went for the quarterback and he went for the spot of the ball, which is very important. All right, let's take a look at it from behind here. Bobby Wagner stepping right into the gap right off the bat. Right into the gap, and plus you got to you got to understand he's got enough he's got enough sand in his pocket to be able to stop that jump right in midair. That's why he's stayed in this league for so long. He's not only a great foot athlete, Mike, very very physical football player. So here's Bobby Wagner. Let's take a look at the anticipation. He sees Daniel Jones here, two offensive linemen, and Matt Breed is set to push. He goes for the quarterback. He doesn't go for the people that are in front of the quarterback just to make a big pile. He goes for the quarterback. Here's, here's his target. Here he is. Watch how he maneuvers himself to this area to be able to make the hit because the quarterback slides. Let's and, take a look. And a lot of that's film study too, isn't it? So it's all film study. All right. All right, now we're going to now what we're going to look at. We talk about the versatility of it. What Pete Carroll has done here with his defense. This is an all-up defense. This is a, this is going to be a pressure type of a defense uh, against uh, 11 personnel. But they've walked everybody up. Now Bobby Wagner has walked up into the gap. He's walked up into this gap, but this is not where he's going to end up, Mike, because they've got a pick game going on. And watch his timing and also watch his acceleration once he gets through the pick game. Here's the pick. I talk about the pick game. Here's the guy he's picking with. Now, as, as they line up here in the gap, Mike, what we're seeing, you line up here in the gap, the protection thinks that they're going to get something like this. All right? They think they're getting something like this. But they don't get something like this. They get this, and then they get time this. Take a look at it. Perfect timing by Bobby Wagner. Sack. And watch the acceleration. This guy is a very, very savvy football player. He's been in the league at a high level, as we both had said, for 12 years. And this is why they've got a special defense that Pete Carroll leans on a lot in his time in Seattle. He went away for a year to the Rams. They brought him back to run the defense, and he's been outstanding again this season in his return to Seattle. He makes plays in every part of the game. Makes plays in the run game, in the pass game, rushing the passer. There's not much Bobby Wagner can do. He got to the Rams about 10 years too late because we wanted to draft him in that draft in the second round, by the way. That's another story. Okay, well, you'll have to watch him again on the other side this week. I'm sorry about that. I really am. I truly am. I can tell. We've got more Titans All Access coming up right after this. Hey, Titans fans, it's Matt Moore. Former Tennessee Titan Javon Curse here. This is Coach Mack. What's up, everybody? Former Titan Keith Bullock here. Former Tennessee Titan Kevin Dyson. Be sure to watch Taste of Tennessee. The place, the food, the folks. This is a Taste of Tennessee. This is absolutely delicious. Exclusively on LG Channels and LG OLED TVs. 
It's time for the decision of the week, sponsored by Hughes and Coleman. On the Titans' first drive of last Sunday's game, Will Levis and the offense faced third down and 10 at the Houston 34. Levis drew a Titans defensive lineman offside, meaning that he had a free play. And the rookie quarterback made the right decision, throwing a deep ball that Nick Westbrook-Akine caught at the Houston 1. Two plays later, Levis got into the end zone. So his decision to take a shot was the right one. The Decision of the Week is brought to you by Hughes and Coleman, official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. Call 800-800-4600. Welcome back to Titans All Access in the BetMGM studio. It's time now for my three keys presented by SeatGeek. Key number one, the Titans must be ready to tackle. Seattle has big guys like DK Metcalf and Noah Fant. They have running backs like Ken Walker and Zach Charbonnet. They have slippery receivers like Tyler Lockett. These Seattle Seahawks are hard to tackle. The Titans have to get them to the ground somehow, some way. Key number two, be ready for the heat. Seahawk defenses always rely on pressure, and this Seahawks team is no different. Expect them to blitz and challenge the Titans up front. Tennessee must be able to stand up to this pressure. And key number three, be on high alert for anything. This is a Pete Carroll team. They need to win all three of their remaining games to make the playoffs. Combine those two things, and you can be sure that Seattle will try whatever, whenever, to win Sunday at Nissan Stadium. The Titans must expect the unexpected from Seattle. Remind you to tune in to Sunday's game as the Titans take on the Seahawks. Kickoff set for noon central time. Titans countdown gets you ready at 11 a.m. central. We've got Titans radio stations all across the region. That'll do it for this week's edition of Titans All Access. Merry Christmas. I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.